Coulomb's law is technically about how point charges exert forces on each other. But sometimes you'll hear people use the term Coulomb's law to refer to a nearly identical law about electric fields. First up, let's talk about what a field is. We know that if we have two charges, each will exert a force on the other. For example, if we plop down a positive charge right here, and another positive charge here, the red one will exert a repulsive force on the blue one, like so. And if we were to put the blue one somewhere else, the force from the red one would be like so. And so on. And so on. Now, it takes two charges to make forces, but it's possible to talk about what one charge could potentially do. That red charge could potentially exert all those indicated forces if someone were to put another positive charge at those locations. Those vectors map out what we call a field, a representation of what the red charge could do given the opportunity. For now we can think of fields as mathematical conveniences, but later we're going to learn that they're very real things that have energy and can even have momentum. Anyway, we're going to mathematically define electric field as the amount of force a charge could exert at some location per amount of charge placed at that location. Or E equals F over Q. More commonly, you'll see that written as F equals QE. Which is something that we get a ton of work out of, so write it down and put a box or a unicorn or whatever on it so you don't forget. Now, take a look at Coulomb's law. If field is force per charge, we can divide out one of the Q's and get the expression for the electric field made by a point charge. It's practically the same thing as Coulomb's law, except that since it only takes one charge to set up a field, there's only one Q in it. In fact, sometimes you'll hear this field equation referred to as Coulomb's law also. We'll be spending plenty of time on fields in detail later on, but for now, here's a few highlights. Number one, fields obey superposition. That is, if you have two charges, each making a field at some location, the net field of that location is simply the sum of the individual fields made by each charge. Calculate the one, Calculate the other, and add them up. Number two. Fields made by combinations of many charges can get complicated looking, but you can often work your way through a situation as long as you remember a couple of base cases. Positive charges make a bunch of field lines that point radially away. For negative charges, that Q has a minus sign on it and flips everything around, so you get field lines that point radially in. And if you were to put two of these side by side and add the individual fields up, you'd get what's called a dipole field. Dipole just means two poles, one positive, one negative. Number three, don't forget how fields translate into actual forces. F equals QE, and F also equals MA. So positive charges will accelerate in the same direction as E fields, and negative charges will accelerate in the opposite direction. That'll do for now. Next time we'll talk about how to translate all this information about ideal point charges into information about real stuff.